Greetings fellow humans, Bad Mark here with another transmission from Mech Tech Keyboards. And I am transmitting from my storage room in my basement. <laughs> this is what has become my studio. My wife has told me that if I can hit a thousand subscribers, she will let me build out a new studio exactly the way that I want it with soundproofing, lighting everywhere. I mean, this is, don't get me wrong, I spent very little for what I have set up. And although I'm not, I know I'm not delivering like top notch videos, I think that my videos are pretty good. I've gotten a lot of positive response. They aren't the best, but I am not putting that much effort into writing scripts ahead of time. I, I like to just come off the cuff and just say what's on my mind and if I go off on a tangent I can edit it later I will be updating that I'm actually thinking of doing some segments so that they follow a particular format so people know oh, okay I'm getting this video this is exactly what I'm gonna see like out of the box I'm gonna get all the specs I'm gonna get a stock sound test I'm gonna you know know the height of the chin the back the typing angles those kind of things but then if i'm going to do a modification video make sure that i include a list of all the supplies that i used as well as um other supplies you know things that can be used in uh you know in case you're in a different region and you can't find this product name but you can't find that and it's close enough to work so i'm going to be working on that a lot more often my channel has grown much quicker than i honestly anticipated because i have done very well actually i haven't done any advertising i post Every once in a while, I post one of my videos on budget keys, but I don't post all of them. I only post ones that I think that are relevant, but now I'm getting a good amount of viewers uh, just from my subscribers. Um, I don't ask for subscriptions. I don't ask for you to like. I mean, that's up to you. I'm going to be doing different formats, and I'm going to try to keep within format. I don't think I'm going to write like scripts that I read word for word verbatim. I think I'm going to write loose scripts, though, for some of my videos. And I will. I, I want to aim to do at least one edited video. And I just want to continue to deliver videos. I, I get a lot of, I mean, some public responses as well. But some people, I don't know, they just prefer to just hit me up privately, which is fine. And they're like, hey, man, I just wanted to thank you for your video because of X, Y, and Z. I decided to go with this one instead of that one. And I'm very happy with my decision. And thank you for talking to me like a friend. And that's what I intend to continue doing is to talk to every one of you as if you're my friends. You're my virtual friends. I, I, I got nothing but love for you. And I wanna make sure that, you know, you get the best for your dollar. But will I, if I have the choice to buy one keyboard or 12 keyboards for the same price, I'm probably gonna go with the 12 keyboards. Variety is the spice of life. And yes, that one, you know, really expensive keyboard might bring something to the game the other ones don't. But I'm gonna have a lot of fun modifying those keyboards to make them sound, or at least try to sound as good as a more expensive one. But in today's video, I'm gonna do something that I've been wanting to do for a while. I did a 65% video a while back. And then I was like, all right, next up is a 75. Then I'll go on to different layouts and everything problem is every week there's a new 75 percent being released so today i'm going to try to go through just a few of them that i have on hand I, I i don't think i'll be covering all of them but i'm going to try to cover as many as the ones that are out there right now that are popular go over what i like about them and what i may not like about them and if you guys have any questions, maybe I'll come back and do you know more on a particular video. Some of these I've already done full-fledged videos on, and they'll be in my video play history. Some of them I have not. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, this is the Epomegger TH80. Now, this board was originally made by Keyduos as the NJ80. Now, this one I bought... Uh, it was one of the prime sales. It's been a while now. Um, I had gift cards in a good amount 
and this one was already discounted so i got it for well i didn't get it for free but basically i got it for free um but i have not even opened it up now uh it is black and the other one that i have is white but i continue to hear nothing but issues about the firmware that Epo Maker is using. I mean, just last week, Epo Maker said, here, here's a firmware to fix X, Y, and Z issue. And then within a day, they're like, don't use that firmware, wait for a new one that's coming. Well, how many people already applied the firmware as soon as you post it on your Discord? Um, I am friendly with one of the uh, Discord moderators for Epo Maker, and I have been trying to help. I mean, I, I, I not help like, oh, let's make Epo Maker a great company, but help in providing feedback and, 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 and communicating between our members that have issues. Because um, there's still members that order the TH96, which is the Ducaro VN96, which is in stock and has been in stock for a while at KP Republic for much less than Epo Maker is selling it for. Um, and there's people that ordered it for Kickstarter and still haven't received it or tracking. And this months ago. They could have just turned around and bought it for 50 bucks less on KP Republic. Anyway, so, but this is the black version. So I, I don't know if I'm going to mess with the firmware. Um, I was actually, uh, up dog, you give me a lot of good ideas. But anyway, uh, he did a, a combination of the IK75 top with the, not the IK-75, but another one by another name. And he did a mix and match. This one doesn't have as much white on the bottom, so I don't think I can do much of a, uh, what you'd say, a, a two-tone kind of look. But who knows? Maybe I'll, I'll, I'll play around. Because the bottom is um, translucent, so there is a downward shining LED, so it might actually look good. But I prefer, and if you have the option, I would get the NJ-80. Uh, from Key Duos. Uh, now they do have options that come with both. This is, the, I believe, this is the steel plate, right? Yeah. Yeah, this is the steel plate. Um, but there are uh, options to get a brass plate, as well as Palm and PC, if I'm not mistaken, uh, from AliExpress, and they run from fifteen to uh, twenty dollars. It is a south-facing um, board. Uh, like I said, with the firmware, I'm not sure. I'm not sitting here trying to knock Epo Maker. Oh my goodness! Yeah, even the even the stabilizers. I remember the stabilizers, and I'm going to be pulling it out here in a second on my TH80. Uh, they they were not this loose, not at all. Um, this knob is a D knob, but it's quite loose. I mean that. I mean, don't get me wrong. I like to be able to remove it, but that one almost feels like. Yep, give it a good enough smack, and it's out of there. So. There does seem to, to be some, some slight differences. Um, if you have to have this keyboard and you can't find the NJ80, then I would purchase it from a trusted seller. I wouldn't, I don't recommend the Epo Maker version of this keyboard, but I may be a little biased. All right, so because we did that one, let's just go ahead and bring out the original. There's a reason that this is original. See, okay, for one, I can literally pick up the keyboard using the knob. The knob is in there, and it's in there good. And it's a nice long stem. That's probably the reason that the other one wasn't wanted to go down because it wasn't long enough. It was just a tiny little stub. Now, see, this is the NJ80. Same thing. We can see at the bottom it has a 2.4 gigahertz receiver. It has. It's just, it, it is a nice keyboard. Um, I have modified this one. I believe I'm running, yeah, I'm running, um, these are porcelain blues uh, from Ringer Keys. And they're nice linear. And this is a keyboard I've daily driven quite a few times. I wish it had one more key, but it doesn't really bother me because I do delete and insert, function insert, and home and end. I mean, so I've got everything I need. I've got the till, tilde and insert and delete are basically, if I got those, I can I can go to town. Uh, but on this one, I'm running the Yunzi Mint keycap set. Uh, this is a really nice keyboard. Now, granted, I did buy this for less than $60 ship. 
but there's a whole story behind that. It's that's not standard, but I have seen them listed from anywhere from between seventy and ninety dollars. I've actually seen it for ninety-eight dollars with keycaps and uh, switches for the Key Duos uh, NJ80 from a reputable store with a brass plate. I first one I received was brass plate. I'm not a fan of brass. I prefer polycarbonates. I prefer plastics for plates. That's just me. Um, I think that the sound they deliver is less tingy, pingy, less high pitched. Metal is just high pitched, in my opinion. But I got this one, and this one I believe also I'm running the steel plate. Let me. Uh, it's been a minute since I've been with this keyboard, so I have to uh, figure out. What plate I have on here. Yeah, it looks like I'm using the stock steel plate. Now, the only way that they can improve on this keyboard is do like they did with the IK87 and include a, um, yeah, that's a steel plate, and include a secondary plate. Uh, I think uh, I think it would behoove manufacturers to uh, start including extra plates, even if they charge a little bit more. Because in that way, I mean, put an aluminum or steel plate and put like a palm or fr4 or pc plate so that people can decide so now if you have the choice i would go with the key duos mj80 as i think it's a better built keyboard i have not had to update the firmware on this though it does have a charging light um, down here but i'm not going to try the Apple maker firmware on this because who knows what will happen so that was our our trip down 80 lane. <laughs> and I know I'm, I'm saying 75%, some of these are 80. They're kind of in the middle. I'm basically just going, you got you got the function row and you got a bit of a navigation row that I'm gonna call you a 75%. Just recently did a uh, review on, and uh, this, this kit, I've gotta tell you, surprised me much more than I expected it to. Um, before I received it, somebody made a post about SA keycaps are getting stuck and it was a GIF. Now granted, I mean, it was just a, it was quick and it was just pressing down and it got stuck. I, it looked like it might've been stuck along the edge, but I don't know if it was a stabilizer or not because of the angle. So I was expecting for this keyboard to come out of the box with issues. Um, I know that there was another person in the sub that was giving advice as to what they could do. I don't know if they were saying it because they had also experienced the issue or because they were just trying to help out. Uh, I tried with numerous different keycap sets, but every keycap set I have, you know, the space bars, and I also tried a couple of corners. I did not find any amount of binding whatsoever. Um, I built this, I loaded it up with uh, some, uh, I believe I've got green, matcha green nacos in here, and just loaded it up stock. This keyboard for $60, um, I think it's 95 with switches and keycaps, but $61 uh, bare bone. It is uh, three mode wireless. Uh, it has the, uh, it does not have a pocket for the 2.4 gigahertz receiver, which I'm neither here nor there on that. Um, and it has plenty of dampening. It has a nice uh, layer between the uh, plate and the PCB. It also has a really thick silicone layer down at the bottom with a 4,000 milliamp hour battery. Now, right now it's a kind of a muted sound, not too muted, not as muted as say the Alice was, the fucker Alice, but I'm pretty confident I'm gonna be able to bring out some more ping out of this. So, um, the full review video for this one is on uh, my channel. So if you wanna take a look at it, uh, this keyboard, honestly, had I had the option of this keyboard when I first got back into this hobby, huh, this would have been bought in a hot flash because, I mean, it's it's a really nice keyboard. And honestly, I mean, I like the, I like the uh, profile of it. I know it's different. I do like the two-tone. I mean, I know it's coming off as red. It's really more of an orange. Um, so that's why I picked this. Even though it, this looks red here, it's my lighting. It's not perfect. Um, anyway, James Donkey is a newer company, I guess, or at least a newer brand that I had not heard of until that key monkey. But apparently those in Southeast Asia have been hearing about them for a while. So 
This, again, I bought this from Keep Monkey. Like I said, I believe it was 60 or $61. Um, and I do believe they offer free shipping. But anyway, I think this is a great kit. This gives the next one, the next contender, a run for our money. But there's one thing that this one that's coming up can do that this one cannot. Although, now, now granted, this one is a gasket mount. Though you're not going to have too much flex. You got about as much flex as you got in most of the Fecker IK75, the TH80s, the gasket mount with very little flex. It's it's not a Tiger Light. The Tiger Light has flex for days. The probably the flexiest keyboards that I've come across. But I kind of just want to almost slide these side by side because dimension wise, these puppies are almost exactly the same. I mean. Look at that. It's almost like they, they were like, hey. I mean, the, the profile is different, obviously. But the similarities. <clears throat> now, granted, okay. James Donkey, A3. I'm mean, putting that aside. This is the Keychron V1. <laughs> so, and this keyboard, while it is gasket mounted, has QMK and Vi out of it, out of the box. It's south-facing LEDs. It has a uh, screw-in uh, PCBs. James Donkey also has screw-in PCBs. And uh, James Donkey has a very similar layout, although their battery is on the top. This one is not wireless. It does not have a battery. Um, but for the price, this... Uh, this is a great entrance, especially if you're using an open source operating system. I mean, I've been a, a Linux desktop user now for well over a decade. So I've, I've found a lot of workarounds to um, dealing with Windows software. For the most part, 99% of software now I can just run in either Wine or virtual machine and just pass through the USB and get done what I need to get done. But this keyboard has the three different typing angles. You can get it with or without the knob. The square is there to protect the knob. I know some people have said, oh, that's ugly. It's actually good support and reinforcement so that knob's not gonna break because people are obviously gonna press on it. So now we're gonna have a stiff typing experience, but not like, ugh. I mean, I, I repeat this often, but gasket mounted keyboards are a new thing. They just recently came out. I want to say it's uh, $69 bare bone and no, it's $59 bare bone, $69 bare bone with a knob. And I think it goes up to $89 with keys and switches. I don't ever buy the keys and switches. Now, got, granted, they come with the Gateron Pros, but I've got enough Gaterons. But their keycaps are just horrible. Um, I've seen them crack, pop. They're very thin, they're clacky, they don't do service to the keyboard. You got the keyboard game right, that's for sure. Keychron has stepped it up this year with these, these V-series. They're basically just tray-mounted versions of their Q-series for a lot less money. And, I mean, honestly, you can get in there, you can tweak it, you can mess with it, you can learn QMK, you can learn VIA, and you're going to enjoy your keyboard at the end of the day. I mean, it's just... It's a great kit, and again, this comes as one of my contenders for what would be one of the better 75% keyboards to buy at this stage in the game, late 2022. This is an odd little bird. I guess it is a 75%. This is the Epo Maker Eclair or the MMD75, and now it has been discontinued, though there are some places that have stock. I've seen it for sale, I want to say on Alley for like $32.95 with like $5 shipping, which I mean, at that price, honestly, it's not that bad. Now this one, I did um, when I was modifying it, I broke uh, the tip off of the, uh, the mode switch. So I have to stick something in there in order to go from wired to wireless. But I don't hardly ever use wireless, so it's not really that big of a deal for me. Um, there was a lot of compromises with this keyboard. Uh, two of the screws are under the rubber pads, so it's very apparent that this keyboard was designed to not be opened up. 
and to not be modified. Now, the way this keyboard sounded, um, and I do have a video of it, so you can look it up, uh, it was horrible. I, I put a little bit of work into this and I was able to make it sound good. These are clickies. Now they're lubed clickies and I lubed the actual click jacket. Just to. It really doesn't sound that bad. I did a silicone pour, um, so it's got some heft to it, but again, this is, uh, and it does have what I really like that has LEDs going all the way around. This diffuser actually works instead of looking like little um, spots like the Shit 75 from Drop does, um, like little spotlights. It's actually one nice diffused line of color. So, and it does have uh, a rocker switch. Uh, I forgot what this type of rocker switch is called. You can't click on it, mind you, but you can up and down the volume. So now this one, I mean, if you can find it cheap, 30 bucks or less, and you're willing to put in a little bit of effort, eh, it's a great deal. But otherwise, I would say skip this one as, I mean, like I said, it's been discontinued. Um, there was a lot of design issues with that one. All right. So next up on the chopping block, what do we have here? Oh, so this right here, this is the next time 75. Uh, next time is a brand they put out a few keyboards um i recently did the x time um next time x68 or mr q68 which is basically an icky aurora 68 clone but it's a um, tray mount instead of a gasket mount but i was actually pleasantly surprised with that keyboard i'll be honest though when i first received this keyboard it was extremely light. I was like, is there a PCB in here? Is this a toy? Now, obviously it's not a wireless keyboard. It's a wired. Now they do come in a three mode version, but there's also an aluminum version of this keyboard, which I've been interested in getting, but I've never been able to find it at a decent price. I mean, I've seen it like more than the GMMK Pro and it's like, it's supposed to be a budget GMMK Pro. It shouldn't be more, but it has the side LEDs and it has what looks like a knurled sign. I mean, it, it, it looks like it was, it's a really made well case. Now that's just pictures. I haven't seen it myself. Now this keyboard, again, this, this, uh, this is going to be in my, in my history. Um, oh, it doesn't have feet. All right. Um, but this keyboard is for what, for the price. And I paid $35 for this keyboard. So keep that in mind. So when I received it, I was like, I got a toy, but I've got a whole mod video where I went and I took and I, I mean, I, I modified this keyboard and I'm quite happy with how it sounds. And I have used this my daily a few times. I have, um, these are NK silks in here, so they haven't been lubed or they're factory lubed. I actually still have a little bit of ping, but it doesn't really come through. So... And I have uh, plumbers modded the uh, stabilizers. But this one, if you can find it for less than I'd say $40, $45 shipped, give it a shot. I know that it's still in production. They may, There may be a new revision, but I don't know because I haven't seen it myself. So I can't say for certain. But if there is a new revision, I'd love to take a look at it. If anybody out there has what you think is a new revision, please let me know. And um, either share some facts with me or maybe I'll go and pick it up myself. And of course, it wouldn't be fair unless I brought an Akko to the game. Now, uh, if you guys have been following my videos, you've seen that I've tested quite a few of the pre-built Akkos. Um, the 3068, the 3098, the 5075 be built out already um and they were all very i didn't have great experiences let's just say but this was the 5075 barebone edition that went on sale uh, i can't recall but it was a lot cheaper than it, it was a good enough price that i i bought it and once i i did some minor tuning to it 
I was quite happy with it. And I mean, I did, the first time I built it, I used all ACO switches and all ACO caps, and I was just surprised at the difference. And you can look in my video history, you can see the pre-built ones, and then you can see the bare bone one that I got and just put ACO stock parts in there. And they just, they, they sounded like two completely different keyboards. Uh, I don't know if it's a QA, QC issue. I don't know what's going on with this one though. I've, I've been happy with it. Um, it's about the first ACO I could say I've been happy with in a while because I've been having some trouble with them. But um, I think Barebone was definitely the choice to go with this one as it worked out well for me. Um, they The Barebone kits, I've only seen it for sale on their uh, ACO gear store uh, on their website. And for some reason, they make it hard to find because a lot of people have been like, I can't find this kit. I'm like, it's right there under kits. But so if you're interested in the, the 5075, it does have, you know, the underglow uh, below. It is a uh, it's not too substantial of a keyboard, uh, but it can it has room to be modified. And uh, but if you're going to get it, I'd go ahead and get the bare bone for this one. This is going to be. Besides the Keychron and the Donkey, this is probably my favorite out of the bunch. Mind you, I'm not a big fan of Frosted White. Uh, frosted Black, maybe, but Frosted White? Mm, milky. That's why I ended up going with Soya on it. Milky, Soya, get it? This was a keyboard that when the whole 75% craze started, I mean, if you guys don't know, it started with a Satisfaction 75, uh, then GMMK jumped on it. The next thing you know, everybody was making a 75% with a knob, basically the same layout. Um, the Satisfaction has basically the same layout, except that it has uh, it's mi it, one less key and it has a little OLED where you can, you know, add GIFs or Bongo Cats. It's QMK Bio, so. Anyway, when I got this, uh, when I was getting other 75% boards, uh, I went through a whole mess with the NJ80, which was fixed. Everything was good. Um, got the next time 75 uh, and one more around that time. Everybody was like, hey, Mark, what do you think of the Fecker IK75? And I'm like, I don't know. I haven't gotten it. It's been sitting in my cart forever. It was higher than I wanted to pay for it, and I just didn't see why it was a little bit higher than the rest of them. Now, granted, I will admit, I missed the whole... I mean, I'm sure you've been on AliExpress. Sometimes those pages have no information. Sometimes they just have way too much information, and they, you know, they don't translate everything correctly, so I kind of just skimmed through that, but I missed... Even though I read it a couple times, I missed where it said it had an extra plate. Anyway, long story short, I had it in my cart for a while. One day there was a, I don't know if it was New Year's or Tech Days or something, but I went to my cart and I saw that normally what was $78, $77 was down to uh, $59. And I was like, all right, I got to pull the trigger. So I went ahead and got it. And I wasn't expecting much. I mean, I honestly, I was like, people just wanted me to check it out to, you know, show what's wrong with it. <laughs> I thought it was not. So I opened it. I received it. I was like, this is not going to be a good keyboard. Boy, was I mistaken. Not only was this keyboard well built, it came with an extra plate. I literally, at first, when I opened it up, I was like, did they... Um, did I get a gift? Did I win something? Why is there an extra plate? But then I went back and actually found where it says comes with both PC, a uh, steel plate and a PC plate. I'm like, budget keyboard with an extra plate for free and less than $60? Holy cropola. Now, another thing about this one, if you're a wireless fan, I don't know if you see it, that's not one, that's two 4,000 milliamp hour batteries. This gives you 8,000 milliamp hour batteries. I have not charged it yet, and I know I can turn it on at any time, and it's gonna give me lights. Um, I mean, obviously I plug it in, but it's uh, 
it's going to give you lights for days. I think you'd probably probably be able to get a month's work, worth of work out of it um, on battery alone. I'd be surprised if you weren't able to. Um, but anyway, this keyboard is extremely well built. It has really nice, uh, you know, like I said, it has a downward facing RGB. That's why I'm kind of tempted to do a combo with another keyboard that I'll bring out here in a second. But this keyboard, not only is it well built, it has a lot of, of basically I was, I only had to do minimal modifications in order to get this keyboard to sound very decent. I know that if I were to open her back up, spend maybe another half hour, 40 minutes on this thing, I'd probably get this keyboard sounding um, as nice as a uh, as something way more expensive than this. So this is definitely in my top three picks. I can't say that this is better or not better. This is yet another keyboard that apparently they 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 say they there's they're selling an Effecker IK75 Pro. QMK version. Now, from all I've seen is that the knob or the rotary encoder is different. I'm not sure if it's using a different PCB. I, I know a lot of people are like, oh, you can't use you know QMK on this PCB, but like I said, since, since QM since QMK works with any Atmel or uh, Sonics, if you're using the Sonics branch, it works with a lot of the MCUs that are out there. Um, and Chinese companies use a lot of cloned MCUs, which basically, even though they're not the same name, they work exactly the same. So um, I would not be surprised that the QMK software for this keyboard is the same for the PCB. I may actually be willing to sacrifice a board one day to, to test that and to prove once and for all. But it's not going to be this one because I really like this one. All yeah. right. So now this is the FL Esports um, Q75. Uh, this is, uh, they also made uh, the MK870 TKL, which a lot of you guys might be familiar with. Um, this is a, uh, well, it's got the Mac, Mac Windows switch right there. FL CMMK or FL Esports is, uh, is what they're called. Uh, it is not a wireless, it's just a wired keyboard. But as you can see, has a nice silicone pad down at the bottom. This, when I opened it, I was surprised at how well this keyboard sounded stock. I have not done any modifications to this keyboard yet. This is one of those keyboards that I could tell somebody like, hey, you want to just get into keyboards and you don't want to do any tuning you know maybe later on but you want to be able to just get a keyboard and just get going well then go with this because i mean not only does it sound great stock it comes with yay a palm plate nope that might be pc it's hard for me to tell from the color but it comes with a plastic plate now it is north facing so for some of you folks north facing i know is a deal breaker um though it really doesn't have to be an issue as i've spoken about in many of my videos but ha having a better plate i'm sorry but a pc a palm an fr4 plate in my opinion in my opinion is better than a metal plate I know some others are going to disagree with that, but this keyboard, when I received it, I was, I was very satisfied. I was like, "Wow, this for," like I said, I haven't, I didn't lube the stabilizers. I just loaded it up with some JWIC T1s blacks and went to town. And, it, and I mean, I could use this as a daily. And I would not have any complaints. Can I finesse more sound out of it? Yes. And I will be coming back to it one day. But for right now, it just it sounds great. I actually like this. This is a, I'm going to say, CSA profile, um, black and white keycap set. Um, and uh, I mean, it's just a for the price, because this keyboard, oh, 
I got this one from Drop. And because of the Drop Key Club discount, I got it, I want to say, for $49. Um, oh, I, oh, I had a $20 Drop Discount Club and a $10 coupon, I believe. Because I think it was $79. I got it for $49. Something like that. But... For what I paid for this, I am extremely satisfied. This is a great board. Uh, I do believe that the Q75 is still in stock um, uh, in some stores. Um, and I'm just surprised that a gaming company came up with such a good keyboard. They definitely went and they took notice of what the community was saying. And you can tell, by the way, that this keyboard is made. So it is quite well put together machinery. And if you can find it under 50 bucks pick it up it's a steal and i think you'll like it especially if you're not a knob fan and you're looking just for the leak key there you don't want a knob and you're like hey i can do f9 f12 for the volume up volume down q75 would be a choice to consider so this is the key deuce nj81 so we've done the key deuce nj80 now let's do the key deus and j81 now i do have a piece of um uh screen protector from a phone uh, for a phone screen so that i don't scratch up the oled screen i am still waiting for the update it's supposed to be out any day now so who knows what that means the update will allow you to upload gifs um and other things because right now all it shows is your battery power your battery level and if caps lock is on so it's a it's a the screen is very minimal at this time now this is a stock keyboard so I mean, I opened it up to take a look what was inside there, and I do have a complete video of this. And sorry about it being a little dirty, but oh, this does have this does have wireless mode. I've completely forgot. Um, this is a I there was no 2.4 gigahertz dongle in the box, but I can I forgot what the key combination was. I can put it into 2.4 gigahertz dongle mode. So I don't know if it got lost along the way. There's apparently, they're saying that there's two versions, one that's only Bluetooth and wired, and one that's three mode, 2.4 Bluetooth and wired, and that that's the only one that can be updated. So I am completely unsure. Kidos, I really would ask that you guys get your, your messaging together. Your website is, it's a, it's a mess and nothing can be found. Now you have clients in the United States why don't you give us some English pages? Why don't you give us some information? Why don't you provide us with something that can, you know, let us know? Because, I mean, I think this is a great keyboard, but if I'm not going to be able to update it, I'm not going to be able to program it, then what's the point? Now, there is one thing I did. I, the programming for this keyboard right now, this is the first under $100 keyboard that does not have QMK via that has per key RGB in their current version of their software programming yes i could set the color of every single led individually and then i can save that if you guys can think of any other keyboard that you know doesn't use qmk via that has per key rgb that's you know reasonably priced i mean i believe i, I paid uh I want to say a total about $65 roughly with Superbuy. I got this from Tabao. But uh, an under $100 keyboard or how a Chinese keyboard that has per key RGB, please let me know because I have yet to come across one. So, but the fact that this one has per key RGB kind of, um, it surprised me. It has, it has a screen, smack a screen on it. I'm going to buy it. I, I, I do say I like the screens on my keyboards. Anyway, this is a newer entrant into the field. Right now, it is available through KeyMonkey. It was and it wasn't. I think it's back on there. Um, otherwise, it's available from AliExpress. I've heard it's coming to um, Amazon, but I wouldn't hold my breath on that. Anyway. Now... Here we have 
This is a, I want to say a jazz original, but as you can tell, it's basically the same keyboard. This one is Fancy Tech 81. I do not like their company, and you probably won't find Fancy Tech anymore because they've changed their name to Final Key. From what I've been told, it was so many chargebacks on AliExpress that they forced them to change their name. They claim that somebody else is using their name and has made them look bad. No, I've not been able to give it a full try because it doesn't have all the gaskets. Now, granted, I probably am gonna break down one day and just make some of my own gaskets for it and see if that works, but it's chintzy. This is a uh, supposed to be metal, but I can actually bend it with my hands. Um, I don't want to bend it too much because I'll probably bend it out of shape, but it's got to be the poorest. I mean, this isn't even as good as the uh, as the one that comes stock on an LK67, and I don't even have one around here. But this this knob is it, it, it's tiny. It feels it feels like I'm going to break it, and it's not even as good as the plastic. I mean, like I said, this is a soft metal, but it's not even as good as the plastic LK67 one. Um, the, uh, it was supposed to come with uh, what are supposed to be uh, Holy Panda clones. They're just Holy Toms. They are not tactile at all. They have no snap. They're very, very boring. They do look just like the Fecker Holy Pandas until you look and take a close look at them and you're actually these aren't even holy toms these are jiction so they didn't even send me the board that i had ordered i wanted the holy toms on there that were that looked like this but are um tactile not not linear so i haven't really given this board a chance because, I mean, it doesn't have all the gaskets. Right now, I moved the gaskets I could down to the bottom, but the top basically has no gaskets. So I'm probably just going to try to take some of these gaskets from another board and kind of form fit some in there and try to do it. Now, why do I have this board here? This is the AJAZ um, AC081. And this is basically the metal version of this kit. Now, granted, of course, we don't have our, our feet, and this is a screw-in, whereas this is a snap-in. And I don't believe... Yeah, this one is not wired. This one only comes... Um, this is wired only. Now, this was sent to me as a gift, not for review. It was an extra inventory item. It actually is loaded with a whole bunch of... I mean, there's one switch there. Oh, that's the same switch. But it does have a mix of... There's a brown. And... There's no stabilizer. So this was this was a, basically an extra inventory item that was sitting around. And they're like, oh, hey, we got one of those. Do you want it? It doesn't have any stabs. And I don't even know if it even has any switches in it. And I was like, yeah, sure, I'll take it. I mean, literally every switch is different in here. So this is a keyboard that I actually, I mean, I don't know if you've noticed the, uh, the legends on the numbers. But, I mean... I get that they were trying to do more of a Sakura um, look on here, but who puts the sub-legends below? I don't know. So uh, now this keyboard does have a nice amount of heft. Um, for supposed to be a gasket mount, it is quite stiff. I have yet to open this up. It uses a badge. I'm curious if I get in there, if there's actually a way to uh, put in an encoder, because I know that there is versions of this keyboard with an encoder. But I will be coming back to both of these at the same time and kind of do a video comparison of both once I get this to at least a degree where I feel it's comfortable to make a you know, safe sound test of. Um, I, I'm still in dispute after six months with this keyboard. I also ordered the fancy Alice and that also arrived broken, broken plate, um, several broken parts and missing parts altogether. And the same thing. Oh, you just don't know what you're doing, buddy. So, um, fancy tech, final key. Me personally, I would stay far clear from them. I, I 
would not recommend. I mean, Ajaz, uh, I, I do want to try the Ajaz AC067. It does look nice. Not the cheese version, the regular version. I'm very interested to, to feel what it's, what it, um, what the typing experience is like on that one. But right now it's, uh, it's a little pricier than, than I'd like. Like I said, if I could take the opportunity to buy you know, several keyboards rather than one expensive one, I'm probably going to go with the variety. But anyway, fancy tech, please stay away from them. Please avoid them. They, they don't deserve anybody's business. This one I haven't had a chance to do too much of a review yet, but this I got. It was on super sale. I want to say it was like 49 and I had like a $25 gift card. So I got this one really cheap. But this is basically, excuse me, this is the IK75 under a different name. It is the, uh, I keep, in the last video I did, I, I did do a, a review video of this one. But I call it the Dierka. And there's no K in there. So it's Dier, Dieria, Dieria. Diarrhea? I I don't want to say it wrong. Um, technology mechanical keyboard. Okay. Now, like I said, I haven't really had a chance to give this keyboard too much of a look. I got to say, I do like the bigger knob on it and the metal, the silver on it. I am not a fan of pudding caps. Pudding caps are, I mean, don't get me wrong, there's newer ones. I do like the soda caps. Those are really cool. But pudding caps, these just aren't my bag. But we have a, uh, I mean, this is for all intents and purposes the same thing as your IK75. Shine through because this case is a little bit taller. I am considering maybe mixing this up uh, with the um, the IK75 and make it like a two-tone case. Uh, but as you can see, even though there's not much, there is a little bit of flex. You could see the plate move just a bit more so there in the middle than you can on the sides, but there's definitely a good amount of flex. So these, like I said, if you can get this on sale, I believe right now because of Amazon days or their new prime, uh, this one's on sale again for $50, if I'm not mistaken. And for 50 bucks, it's, it, it's, it's a good deal. I mean, now granted, this is the IK75, but it only comes with the steel plate. Granted, you can buy the PC plate online uh, on AliExpress, I believe, for $15.99, if I'm not mistaken. Um, it comes with some, uh, what are these? Huh. TMKB. Hmm. I haven't heard of TMKB. But they're actually, they're a decent brown. I mean, they could use some Lubin, but... Obviously, we got five pin compatibility. We have north facing LEDs. Oh, come on. Um, the plate is, isn't too tight, so you're not gonna have to worry about, um, uh, you know, having to push too hard on the switches. It does have, uh, like I said, the LED, and it has three mode compatibility as, long, uh, as well as a pocket for the 2.4 gigahertz receiver. Seriously, if you are going to include 2.4 gigahertz receivers, which honestly, stop. We don't need them. Bluetooth 5 has gotten, Bluetooth 5 and above has gotten to the point that there's a lot less interference and there's a lot more range. So all you're doing by adding the 2.4 is further creating interference in a range that is already being used by so many different things anyway that's a uh, kind of a budget ik75 um, it does come with switches and keys which uh most of the ik75 come bare bone so you know in case you do like to put in caps there's a choice what i've had sitting around for a while i do throw it into uh, my bag every once in a while it is a low profile keyboard it is the keychron k3 um and it uses the low profile switches now i am using a different keycap set on here this is a uh, beach by newfie studios i think it's called beach i know it's newfie studios but i believe it's called beach this is a, a compact um 
75 percent that um oh it's not is it not charged not on but for what this offers now i don't know what it runs for nowadays i know i got a deal on this on ebay it was an open box i think i paid like 35 dollars for it now i didn't have keycaps that's why i bought the extra keycap actually it did have keycaps so it was missing a couple anyway i bought some extra keycaps these are nice it's a nice little it's a chiclet keyboard basically but it's uh it's like i said it's mostly for when i'm on the run and i just need to type something real quick because it's lightweight and i could stick it almost anywhere just wedge it get done what i need to do i have never tried to do any sort of modifications i guess i could try to leave the switches maybe but i just wanted to bring this one up i mean it is a uh it is hot swappable, but it uses these, I I believe these are called chalk switches or low profile MX. Um, they are they are badge with Keychron. And even though they're browns, they do have actually a little bit more tactility than brown, but I mean, your travel distance has gotta be what? 1.8 millimeters? Can't be that much. It really can't. And, um, huh, you know what? This appear, these appear to be optical switches. Huh. Yeah. These are optical switches. I was not aware. Hey, you learn something new every day. I was not aware that these are optical switches. I thought these were just regular old switches. So, because I've got a couple of optical switch keyboards. I mean, I've got this one right here. Which, oh, I mean, it's... Uh, it's a Skyloom, and uh, I did modify the crap out of it. I painted it myself. I never used to like red, and I don't like red. But this was a uh, this was a pretty good, uh, pretty good little project that I enjoyed, and uh, I call it Big Red now. But my point being that my point being that optical switches i would not knowingly buy an optical switch board nowadays i did buy one but it's because of the the layout and what i want to do to it it's it's a really futuristic keyboard looking keyboard it's mainly decals but i just it's more for fun and it was like 13 bucks so i was like shoot uh this one i didn't know was optical like i said i got this probably at the beginning of my hobby and i was like oh low profile mm, 35 dollars mm -hmm. So I went ahead and got it. Um, and like I said, I throw it in my, it usually, actually I need to charge it now, but I usually keep it in my laptop bag as just an external because it is so flat. I do also use the uh, Jazz, mm, I can't remember the name of it. It's the one that has a slot for a tablet and it has a volume knob. There's two versions. The first one, the one that I have is not a hot swap, uh, but that's a decent little keyboard. These are going to be a little bit pricier in the range, but we're still dealing with 75% boards. So here, if you guys hadn't already, you know, been able to distinguish, oh, that's right, it doesn't have the sticker. Q1, I need to get all of these model numbers straight. Um, it comes in the navy blue. I've got the Terror Down Under with the S8 keycaps on. I have done a lot of mods to this keyboard, and it's starting to sound pretty good. Definitely had to do the force break mod to it, but I'm happy with it. Um, it definitely sounds better than my GMMK Pro. Now, this is not in the lineup because basically I'm dismissing that keyboard. I have nothing with issues with that keyboard, and... Um, I have plans for it. It should be interesting. It's going to be destructive plans, but it should make for a fun video. Anyway, that's all I'm going to say about that for right now. But anyway, this is the the, the Q1 knobbed edition. This is uh, it's been on sale anywhere from 149 to 169. Um, I think 149 started in bare bone. It might be 159. But it is a really nice keyboard. Um, if you are in the U.S., I would recommend going to Davini Keys uh, to purchase it. And you can use Budget Keys as a 5% discount code. So this is a great keyboard, but it does need some work to sound good without any force break, without any 
I put polyfill, but without any sound dampening material, you're gonna get a lot of ping out of this keyboard. But with a little bit of work, this keyboard easily can become your daily driver. It's so much fun. What do I have in here? Oh, I have some, uh, some tactiles in here from a company that I shall no longer name. So anyway, yeah, it's, it's nice, huh? All right, like I said, I wanted to do a quick video. I'm already, I don't even know how, how long I'm into this. I've been recording now for one hour and 10 minutes. So <laughs> this is gonna be a long video. Now, here's the Akko Mod 007. Now, this was supposed to be the version two but it's not. Uh, I um, There's a long, long story. Uh, Akko is every, almost every day now they're announcing a new board. I cannot even keep track of the 75% boards they have. The 5075B, the 5075 Barebone, the 5075S, the 75B, the 75B Plus, the 75B Plus Top. I mean, there's just so many of them, and I can't keep track of a single one of them. I think they're growing their catalog too quickly, and they themselves have said that they're, they're limited into their QC and customer service staff. It took me a week with my Mod 08 to get a res response via email. This one's the Ido Bow uh, gradient set anyway. I'm sorry, I went off on a tangent. I'm trying not to go off on tangents, but this one I uh, I did uh, modify. I added the PE foam pad. Um, I believe I also added um, uh, have to go back to the video i've modified so many keyboards nowadays that i i kind of get um get confused like did i do this one to that one or this one to that one but anyway uh they have they now have a south facing version of this keyboard um which to me it's not an issue um if the switches uh are gonna are, aren't fit properly for for north facing then just a little piece of paper in the stem does a trick and that's it. So I, I, I just, I thought North facing interference was really a big issue. It really isn't. But this keyboard modified, it, it does sound pretty good. I like it. Uh, if you can get this for 50, 60 bucks, I'd get it. Anything more than that, just pass. Akko, Akko Cloud Driver is, as a previous software developer, I'd give it, F minus. <laughs> I mean, it's just, it's not very good. And half the time it doesn't work. I mean, they could be doing QMK and Via. Everyone should be doing QMK and Via or come up with a brand new open source firmware, something like that. <sighs> that guy that developed, be, he was able to do with three channels as many keys as he wanted to because he's doing timing and pulling on it. So there's, the keyboard can be redesigned, and I think we're going to see some changes coming on the pipe in the next couple of years. But anyway, this was supposed to be a short 75% video. Uh, I hope that I covered uh, some of the keyboards that you guys are interested in. If you guys have any questions, put them down to me in the comments or share in the subreddit, and I'll try to come back to them and handle them one by one or maybe do another follow-up video. The next video I will be doing is on TKLs because I think TKLs are great. I mean, they're my favorite format, and I'm going to talk about that in the video. And then I will probably do a... 100%, 1,800, 96%, uh, you know, kind of a, a grouping of those. And then I'm going to do 60% and belows. So 60s, 40s, ortholinear, stuff like that. I hope that this 75% video at least maybe answered some questions for you, gave you some ideas of where you'd like to go. Uh, again, if you have any questions, shoot them to me. I do my best to answer them as often as possible. But until the next transmission. Keep calm and keyboard on.